specifically about some protists. And when we, the protist kingdom is kind of broken up into plant-like protists, which we're not going to really get into, and animal-like protists. We're focused on the animal-like protists. They're often called protozoans. Okay? And so that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about some general characteristics. Then we're going to talk about how we group these um, protists. And then we'll talk about three specific examples that we're going to be seeing uh, in class that you're going to have to know about. So let's start, though, with the general, um, general information about protists. So, you guys just told me in our question today, protists are unicellular, so they're all single cell. They're eukaryotic, so we know inside of their cells they have a nucleus, they have other organelles, they're complex cells. Some are autotrophic, some are heterotrophic, and some can be both. And really, the protist kingdom started off in taxonomy as a kingdom where scientists just sort of threw anything that didn't fit in one of the other groups. If it didn't fit with the animals or plants or fungi or bacteria, scientists just kind of put it in protist. So it's a big group with lots of different types of organisms um, with lots of different characteristics. They live where there's water. So like I said, if you go to a pond around your house or a stream, if you were to take a sample of that water and look at it in the microscope, you probably see some living protists. I'll take it. Some living protists in that water. And there are also some protists that live inside of other organisms. They can be parasites. Some protists cause um, diseases. Probably one of the most common is a, a disease called dysentery. Have you ever heard of that? No. Um, it's sometimes called amoebic dysentery because it's caused by a parasitic amoeba that causes a digestive uh, disease in the digestive system. And often it's spread in areas where there's not clean drinking water where waste can contaminate water, and people drink it, and the amoeba can spread from person to person through those waste, causing dehydration and, and diarrhea and stuff like that. That's um, There's another show, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like the frogs and stuff and all the other stuff that live in the water, it's like something like that lives in the water, can't you scan it too? And then uh, it depends. There's a lot of parasites spread like that from an animal spreading it to a person, and we'll talk in a minute about an example of that. Um, many protists reproduce in a way a process called binary fission. You know, we lots of times we'll break down words. Binary fission. Does anybody know what binary means? Or the prefix by? Have you? No? Jasmine? It means two. Like binary um, in terms of computers. Binary is, you know, computers translate everything into a series of zeros and ones. It's sort of an either or, a two, a two choices, zero or one. Or, does anyone know? How many stars are there at the center of our solar system? A lot. Two million. No. One. What do we call it? Oh, the, sun. the sun. Some solar systems actually have two stars um, in the solar system. Those are called binary systems. Those are called binary um, solar systems. For example, if you watch Star Wars A New Hope, Luke's on Tatooine. 
and, and he's, he's looking at the sunset and the wind's blowing through his hair and the music's playing. But how many sunsets are there? Two. Yes, he lives on the binary solar system. There are two suns setting on Tatooine, in case you didn't know. It's Tatooine. Tatooine's a planet. That's where uh, Luke lives. That's where Anakin lives. Um, anyway, so binary means two parts. Fission means splitting. So binary fission is two parts splitting. This is when a, an organism basically copies itself and splits in half. So here I have a paramecium. The nucleus copies itself. The middle starts to pinch in, and then it divides and forms two paramecia. It's split. It's reproduced. Okay. It says four, two. What type of reproduction <coughs> is this? There's two forms of reproduction. Gala? Yes, this is a form of asexual reproduction. Or are they daughters, though? And, all right, Isaiah, close your mouth. Requires one parent, funny? Be quiet. Asexual reproduction. Of course, just one parent. So we started with one cell, and we formed two cells. So it's reproduced. But as we know, in asexual reproduction, the offspring are identical to the parent. So there's no variation. There wasn't any exchange of genetic material. This is a form of asexual reproduction. There are some protists that can reproduce sexually. They can exchange genetic material before reproducing. But most reproduce asexually. <coughs> so there's really four big groups of protozoans, and they're based on how they move, how they get around. There's different ways they have of moving. So one group are called the amoeboids. The amoeboids move by sort of um, oozing forward. They have just a very thin cell membrane, and their cytoplasm can sort of ooze around, and they are constantly changing their shape. And so they send forth their cytoplasm, and they just kind of ooze forward. The cytoplasm they send forward are called pseudopods. Pseudo means false or fake. Pod means feet. Like what's a, a doctor that specializes in people's feet called? A podiatrist. A podiatrist. P O D. Podiatrist. They work on people's feet. So um, these pseudopods just kind of ooze forward, and that's how it moves along, just by blobbing along. We're going to look at an amoeba tomorrow, and that's one of the types of um, protists that moves this way. We're going to look at amoeba, paramecium, and you believe. A re, uh, compound register. What's the um, like one that um, deals in uh, material? The compound register. I mean, uh, one million. Electrons. Yeah. All right, ciliates. <coughs> ciliates move using cilia. That's why they're called cilia. Oh, this, yeah, this is a, a, di a picture under a microscope of an amoeba. And you can see it just kind of has a random shape. It doesn't have any specific shape. It just kind of moves forward. And these little extensions, these parts of its cytoplasm that are oozing forward, those are called the pseudopods. I know it may look like a dolphin or something, as everyone's saying. It's just a random shape, though, that happens to look like that. That's what does silly <coughs> It means fake or false. No, silly. Oh, cilia? Yeah, cilia are tiny little hairs that um, sort of paddle the protist through the water. We're going to look at paramecium. And it's hard to see it in this picture, but surrounding this cell are these tiny little hairs covering the outside. They act like little paddles that sort of um, paddle the paramecium through the water. Is it? Mm -hmm. For the paramecium? Or the amoeba? Yeah. Which one? The, the amoeba. They just kind of blob along, so they, they're 
flat and they just kind of ooze forward. Mm -hmm. Slime along. Slime their cytoplasm forward and then yeah, basically pull themselves along. The flagellates move using something called a flagellum. It's like a long tail that pulls them through the water. The one we will look at is called the euglena. I don't know if you can really see it, but at the end of this euglena, there's a, a long, looks like a hair. That's the flagellum. It sort of whips around and pulls the euglena through the water. And then the last type was called sporozoans. And these don't really move from place to place on their own. Many of these are parasites and they just move within an organism. And the one we'll read about next week is a protist called Plasmodia. And this protist infects millions of people each year, causes the death of many people and illness of many people. It's not really a big problem um, in our country. It used to be. But it is a major problem in uh, tropical areas, uh, causes of blood disease. I think you probably have heard the name. I don't even know what it's called. A blood disease. No. It's caused by a protus. Have you? Cancer. What? No, some type of cancer. You read about this, I've heard, in fourth or fifth grade. It's, yes. Malaria. So malaria is the name of the disease. We'll learn a lot more about it next week, but <laughs> malaria is spread by mosquitoes in tropical areas. And when a mosquito bites a person that has malaria, this plasmodium protist can get into the mosquito. And then when it bites another person, the plasmodium can be transferred into that person, and the disease is spread from person to person through these mosquitoes. Yeah, we'll talk about that as well. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Uh, all right, we're going to talk all about it next week, so I'm not gonna, I won't tell you all about it now. Next week, we'll, learn, we'll uh, learn all about it. So we're going to talk about each of these now. So that's their grouping. Amoeboids, flagellates, ciliates, sporozoans, and we're going to... Um, we're going to look at three of them, and we'll talk a little more specifically about them. So for the amoeboids, we are going to be looking at an amoeba tomorrow. Um, an amoeba, they move by pseudopods. So if you look at this picture, yes, draw it, please. What you see is this amoeba just has a random shape, and it's sending forth these extensions of its cytoplasm. Those are the pseudopods. It's kind of just blobbing forward. And they use those pseudopods not only to move, but to eat. They use these pseudopods to engulf their food. And I just want to show you, I'm going to draw this for you so you can understand this. If Let's say I have an amoeba. Again, they just kind of have a random shape. And so if there's a little yeah. piece of food, now again, these are single cells, so they eat tiny little other protists and tiny little bits of things. So if it has a, a little particle of food that it's going to try to ingest, what happens is it sends forward some pseudopods. So the cytoplasm just kind of oozes forward. Okay. And then that process continues. Okay. Wow. And they sort of ooze forward and they're starting to surround this food particle until okay, they connect to each other on the other side. And now where is the food? Inside. Now it's inside of the amoeba. Okay? They've engulfed their food. And this is then called, this little area, it's called a food vacuole. Because it's a little area of storage that has a piece of food. Now the amoeba can then break it down using enzymes and then can absorb the nutrients from it. So it engulfs it by using these pseudopods.
So pseudopods are used for movement and for taking in food. And once the food has been engulfed, it's inside of a little food vacuole to store it until it's digested by enzymes. Now, there's also a problem that many protists have because they live in fresh water. Can anyone think of a problem they maybe have that they might have based on something we learned about a few weeks ago? So, protists living in fresh water, you guys know? Katie, what did you say? Oh. Yeah, remember what happens to a cell placed in fresh water? What happens? Because why do they get tired? Because uh, there's higher concentration of, outside, of water outside. Yeah. And then it goes inside. Yeah, and they start to swell up. They can even burst. Remember? What's that name of that process? It's a call when water moves into them. Oh. Osmosis. So if, if protists that live in a pond or any other fresh water, that's an issue they have to deal with. Water's constantly going into them, they're swelling up, they could burst. So they have a special organelle inside of them that helps to deal with that. It's called a contractile vacuole. And it's basically a pump that it fills up with water and then it squeezes that water out of the protist, keeping its water balance correct. Kind of like, in, in, you may not know this, but you may have in your basement in your house a sump pump. Yeah. A sump pump is a little pump that turns on if your basement starts to take in water. Once it reaches the sump pump, it turns on and it pumps that water outside so your basement doesn't flood. Similar sort of thing with these protists is that when water's coming into them, this contractile vacuole pumps it out, keeping them at the same size in the right condition. We're going to see these in our diagrams in a minute. Often they look like a star shape, where the um, rays of the star bring the water into a central area, which then squeezes it out. OK, so those are the amoeboids. Ciliates. The ciliates move by cilia, tiny little hairs that paddle the uh, protist around, kind of like oars on a boat. We will be looking at one called paramecium. And paramecium have a very distinct shape. They look like a footprint. They're often called slipper shape. They don't have a flexible cell membrane that changes all the time. They basically have an outer shell that keeps them this shape. You can see around the outside. This is just a drawing around the outside of all these tiny little hairs. Okay, that, those are the cilia. They work together, they paddle it around to allow it to swim through the water. This is what one really looks like. Now it's hard to see the cilia on the outside, but they are out there allowing it to swim around. So this outer shell in the paramecium, it's called a pellicle. And it just gives them that distinctive shape. But it also poses some problems. Because the amoeba just engulfed its food. But the paramecium, since this has this hard outer shell, it can't do that. So instead of surrounding their food, they have a little sort of indentation that the food goes into. It's kind of like their mouth. Right? That's how they get food. So there's this oral groove that takes the food in. It then goes through a tube called the gullet. It's kind of like the, the throat of the amoeba, the esophagus. And that leads into a food vacuole down here. So that's how food gets into the paramecium. But also, because they don't have this very thin membrane on the outside, in order for waste to get out of the paramecium, has to go through this special um, organelle called the anal pore, which gets rid of the waste. So that's the paramecium. Eliminates waste. And 
then our other group is the flagellates. The flagellates, which move using a flagellum. That's this whip-like tail. I know it looks like a fish that's been caught on a line. It's not. That whip-like, that little hair, that's its flagellum. That's its tail. And that flagellum sort of twists around and pulls the eulina through the water, allowing it to swim. And eulina are interesting. What do you notice about its color? It's green. What should that tell you about it? It's not a plant cell, it's a protist. It can go through photosynthesis. It does have chloroplast, which means it can what? It makes its own food. If it's in an area where there's light, it makes its own food through photosynthesis. But on the other hand, if it's in an area where there is not light, if it's in the dark, it can go out and find food to eat. So it can actually be an autotroph or a heterotroph depending on condition. So this is the flagellum, is the whip white tail that pulls it through the water, has chloroplast. That's, that's, that, that's the molecule pulls that whip Yeah, that sort of whips around and pulls it through the water. It's kind of like a propeller almost, like a boat. And then the other thing that the um, euglena has is this thing called an eye spot. Now it doesn't have an eye that it can actually see anything, because they don't have a brain or anything. None of these protists do. They're single cells. But it has this eye spot, which is a, an area that's sensitive to light, so that it can swim in a certain direction towards the light, so that it can do photosynthesis. today is, is look at some diagrams of the three <coughs> protists we're going to see tomorrow so that you know what you're looking at. Hey. Raise your hand if you tell me which protist is this that I'm showing you. Grace Lynn? It's uh, That's an amoeba, yeah. You could tell because it has some strange shape. A, this thing labeled here, or how about even this thing, or this thing? What do you think those are? Jasmine? Yeah, those are vacuoles. Those are areas where the amoeba had surrounded and digested some food. Every time it engulfs a new piece of food, it creates a new food vacuole. Eventually, it'll disappear. Now, because this is a single cell, what do you think B would be? Yeah, that's a nucleus. All of these are, have a nucleus, these protists. And then at the same time, what do you think C is? This oh, is a single cell. It's a cytoplasm, right. And here, where the cytoplasm is oozing forward, false feet, what do we call them? False feet. Pseudopods. Those are the pseudopods. Or they can allow it to engulf this. Do we have to remember how to spell pseudopod? Which one is this? Flip stuff. Yeah, it's shaped like a flip. Hard outer shell, Jasmine? It is a cilia, but this is one of the cilia. It's paramecium. Last year I told my class I'm going to invent a new brand of, of sneakers and call them mecium. And this is going to be the simple. Did you do it? Then you can buy a paramecium. Are you actually going to? I'm sure your Ross can't sell. Yeah, you can invent them and sell them. Wait, how do you actually sell them? You can buy a paramecium. How much are they? I thought you had them. I don't know. I didn't have the design. What brand are they? No, it's their own brand. Mecium brand. And this is going to be the logo. It's going to be the side. They're not like Nike. Oh, the mecium brand. What's your, what's your, um, Jordan? All right. So this paramecium, what, do you, what is A? What he can't What is A? Cilia. Those are the cilia, the hairs that cover the outside. Hello. Okay. Thanks. Um. Now remember, these don't have a flexible mechanism.
membrane. So they have this indentation that brings food in. What is it called? The vacuole. Not yet. No. It's like the mouth, but it has a different name. Um, uh, oral cavity. Close. Oral groove. Oral groove. I think they could name for band. How about B? This oral groove leads into a tube first. Oh, um, it's like it's esophagus. Tyler? Huh? You say? I have a It looks like oh, a gullet. Kind of? Yeah, gullet. Oh, wait, I just said that. <laughs> That's the gullet which brings the food in. And it's not labeled here, but what is this? Who took it? Flash it. After the gullet leads into. No. Yes, an area in the side. If I look at it, oh. that would be a food vacuole. Because that's where the food goes. How about this? What is this? Jasmine? That's the nucleus. Actually, the um, paramecium has two a macro nucleus and a micronucleus, they're called nuclei. And they can exchange this little, that little part, the micronucleus, can be exchanged from one paramecium to another sometimes in a process called conjugation. Why would there be an E? E, this is a form of sexual reproduction and more variety to the species. Uh, e is the cytoplasm that's all over. F is how waste leaves this paramecium. It's called the anal pore. And last, number nine, what did I say could be shaped like a star? The spokes bring water in, the middle area pumps it out. Oh, oh, oh. I got this, I got this, I know this one. Um, Isaiah? Uh, uh, and Jimmy said, um, no. Dr. Pranata, that's a contractile oh, vacuole. Vacuole, vacuole thing. It pumps water out to maintain water balance. And we gotta finish this last slide here. So what is this one called? It looks like a fish. It's a flagellate, but what's it called? Tyler. Euglena. What is its tail that moves it through the water? No. Doesn't? No, it's a flagellum. Near the flagellum is the eye spot, which senses light. C, I wish th this was in color, because C, these would all be green. Chloroplast, correct. What do you think D is? Nucleus. Nucleus. And E? Yes, contractile macroplast. So these are the parts you're going to have to know. We'll look at these protists tomorrow and Friday, and hopefully we'll be able to see some of these parts of these various types of protists. Oh, yeah, sure.